All right, hey guys. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about error checking, um, specifically error checking in the context of transmitting data between two devices. So let's say for example, we've got device A and we've got device B. Um, and we wanna transmit some data from A to B. So let's say we want to send 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. Uh, we want to send this binary value from A to B. What we want to do is we want to, we want to make sure that when it arrives at B, it looks the exact same. So it's 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. Okay? That is the point of error correction. Now, in reality, um, we're not just going to be transmitting numbers from A to B. Um, we're transmitting a data packet that contains those numbers. So if you, remember our, if you remember our discussion about data packets, uh, we had a header, a payload, and then a trailer. Um, so in our header, we would have the address of device B, which would be some kind of IP address. In our payload, we would actually have this number. And then, and then in our trailer, we would have some other values to help us do error correction. So that's the point of today's lesson. We're gonna learn different methods um, that are used by computers to detect errors in data that is transmitted from one device to another. So there are four main types of error correction methods that we're going to talk about today in terms of transmitting data. And there's one other one at the end that's just more in terms of entering data. So you've got checksum, error check, automatic repeat request, and parity check. So the first one is checksum. So there are five steps um, to error checking using checksum. Um, the first step is that a value is mathematically calculated before a piece of data is sent. So for example, if we are sending um, five, four, three, if that's the piece of data that we are sending, we might do some mathematical operations on that. So you might add up all the digits, um, which would give us uh, nine plus three, which would give us 12. And um, then divide that by 11. Well, okay, let's just say, actually just for simplicity's, simplicity's sake, we might just add up all the digits, right? So what we're gonna do when we send this piece of data for, from A to B, is we're not just going to send um, 543, but we're also going to send um, the checksum. So we're going to send something like, might send something like 12, 5, 4, 3. Okay. And what's going to happen is when this arrives at B, at B, um, the computer device at B is going to do the same calculation. So it's going to add 5 plus 4 plus 3. And then it's going to compare that value to the checksum right here. Okay. So basically what's happening is um, is that we're doing we're going to send a value we decide to send a value um, we do some calculation on that value to give us a specific checksum um, we send the checksum and that value in this case twelve and five four three to the next device that device does the calculation again to give us a checksum um, or to give us yeah to give us our checksum and we compare that against twelve. Um, so, if that doesn't make sense, let me just do another example. I'll give you another example that is kind of more common um, in terms of practical usage. So again, we've got device A and we've got device B. Okay. So from device A, we want to send 54. Okay. So we're, going, we're not only going to send 54, but we're also going to send a checksum along with 54 for error correction. So in order to get that checksum, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add up five plus four equals nine. We're going to multiply that by two to get 18. And then we're gonna do a modulo of 11 
um, to get the remainder, and we divide 18 by 11, um, which is just going to be which is just going to be seven. Okay. Um, so now we're going to add seven. We're really trying to send 54, but we're adding seven just for error correction. So I know this one right here seemed like a fairly complex process, um, but in the computer, it might be specified as some formula like add digits. Multiply by two. Um, divide by 11, get the remainder. Okay, so that's how we get seven. We put seven right here alongside the data that we actually want to send. And then that's going to be sent right here to device B. So device B is going to look at 54. So it's going to look at this value right here, because that's what it's going to receive. It's going to get 54. And then it's going to perform this same calculation on 54. So all of this stuff that we did here and right here, it's going to do that same stuff. Device B is going to do that same stuff on 54. And if device B also gets 7, That means that there's no error and everything is good. If device B goes through these steps and gets like six or five, that means there is an error and um, device B needs to ask device A to send the data again without an error. Okay, so this was kind of complicated. Our previous example is simple with just adding up digits, but that's kind of how it works, right? So we want to send some number. Um, we perform a calculation on that number, which in this case was 54. Um, to get another number, our checksum, right here. We send both together to the next device. The next device performs that same calculation, gets a number, and then compares it to the checksum. So here as well, B was receiving 754, but it was just performing this calculation over again. So. Just again, to summarize, I guess we, should, we could probably do um, one more example. We could just say like, okay, let's go back to echo check. Um, we could just say, let's say we've got, let's say from device A to device B, we wanna send 12, right? Um, we might do some calculation. It might just be as simple as adding up digits to get three. So then we send 312 to device B. Um, and device B adds up the digits for 12. It does that calculation. Um, it gets 3, and then it compares that against this 3. Okay, So send from A to B. Um, at A, um, perform a calculation on the data you want to send to get a checksum, like 7. Um, when you get to B, Again, perform that same calculation and then compare against the checksum. So, all right, let's kind of move on. Um, so, we've got echo check right here. Uh, echo check doesn't really involve any mathematical calculations. Um, so, really, what echo check does is it sends data to the receiving device. So, we're sending from A to B. Um, so what, so what B does is, let's say we're sending, um, a data packet with 0, 1, 1, okay? That's being sent to B right over here. And B actually, as soon as B receives 0, 1, 1, 1, it sends it back to A, okay? And then A checks whether there is a difference between what it sent so what it sent and what it received back, which should have been 0, 1, 1. If they match, there's no error. And now we know that the connection between A and B is good to go. So that's just an, that's just an echo check. Basically, A, A, is sending, A is sending data to B. Um, B is sending that data back to A. Um, A compares. 
and then if um, and then if what A sent is, is the same as what it received, then we're good to go. Let's go to automatic repeat request. So again, this one is not mathematical. It's more of a process the same way as echo check was. And there are two methods that are quite similar to each other. So basically, with, we have positive and we have negative acknowledgement method. Um, let's go through this process. So first here, the sending device. So you have send, we have A, which is going to be our sending device, sends the first packet. So A is sending some data right here, right? The receiving de device, which is going to be B, receives the data packet, and it checks for errors. This could be in any number of ways. It could be check some which we used before. It could be parity check like we saw, like we'll see next. Um, so if there is no error, it sends a positive acknowledgement signal back to the sending device. So B is sending a signal back to A that says everything is good. Um, so once A receives the signal, it sends the next data packet. So what's really different about this is that positive acknowledgement signal that it sends back. It's just sending back a signal, some data that says, okay, everything was good, there was no error, our connection is good. Um, now, basically what's going to happen is the sending device, A, is going to wait for a positive acknowledgement signal for a certain amount of time called a timeout. Um, if in that amount of time, let's say 20 seconds, for example, uh, A doesn't receive a positive acknowledgement signal, it's going to send a data packet again. And it's going to keep doing that up until a certain limit, um, until it receives a positive acknowledgement signal. Usually there's a limit of like 20 times. So it's gonna, basically that means that it, so that basically that means that A will send a data packet 20 times until it receives a positive acknowledgement signal. If it doesn't, then there's clearly an error in the connection. Um, a negative acknowledgement signal is quite similar. Again, we've got A, and we're sending to B. A is our sending device. The sending device first sends a data packet. Again, the receiving device um, receives it and checks for errors. the data has any errors, it sends a negative acknowledgement signal back. So the difference between the positive acknowledgement method and the negative acknowledgement method is that um, in the positive acknowledgement method, B sends a signal back if everything is okay. In this method, B is sending a signal back if there's an error. Um, so, if, um, if A receives this negative acknowledgement signal, a data packet will be resent as many times as is necessary until no negative acknowledgement is received. So the data packet will just keep sending, will just keep resending, or sorry, the sending device will keep resending that data packet. So A will keep resending that data packet um, until it, gets, it doesn't get a negative acknowledgement signal from B. But um, also, we have a timeout in negative acknowledgement as well. So the sending device will only wait a limited amount of time for the negative acknowledgement before sending the next data packet. So for example, let's say A sends a data packet to B. It doesn't require a, or doesn't get a negative acknowledgement for like 20 seconds, let's say. then it'll just keep sending the next data packet. And there's usually a limit. It'll only do this like 10 times before it acknowledges, before the system says, okay, there's obviously something wrong here. So that's negative acknowledgement and that's positive acknowledgement. Now, this one is probably the most mathematical 
um, and this is parity checking. So in parity checking, um, this usually involves sending data in the form of eight digit binary numbers or eight bit values, okay? But in this value, only seven bits are going to be what we're actually sending. As part of parity checking, we're going to add an extra bit just for error checking. So really, while we're sending 8-bit numbers, um, the actual data we're sending is only 7 bits. This bit right here is only for error checking. And that's how parity checking works. So we've got device A and device B. Sorry, my rectangles just keep getting worse and worse. And we're going to send some data packet where the payload is an 8-bit number. Let's say this, for example. Um, in reality, these 7 bits are all that these devices really care about. That's, I mean, really, A is sending 7 bits. But it's also including an 8-bit, bit, an 8th bit, not because it's necessarily data that we care about, but just for error correction to make sure that there's no error. seven bits actual data, uh, one bit uh, error checking. Um, now, just I want to emphasize again that this particular error checking bit, this is going to be called a parity bit. Okay, so let's move on to the two types of parity checking, the odd and even parity check method. So they're going to be generally, um, well, okay, let's start with the odd parity check method. So what this means is that when we're sending an eight bit um, number with one bit being the parity bit, all the, z the number of zeros and the number of ones should be odd. So for example, in this example right here, we've got one zero, two zeros, and three zeros, okay? Right here, including our parity bit, we have one one, two ones, three ones, four ones, and five ones. So, because, the, because there is an odd number of zeros and an odd number of ones, we know that in this particular piece of data, there is no error. Um, and generally, like we're not going to be integrating, we're not going to be putting in parity bits. You're going to have to read numbers like this and decide whether there is an error or there is not an error. So if you see an 8-bit value, and there is not an odd number of zeros and an odd number of ones. That means that there is an error, okay? Now, even the even parity check method is pretty much the same. Um, it just means that we need to have an even number of zeros and an even number of ones. So if we take a look at this example right here, with this one being the parity bit, all right, we have got one zero, two zeros, three zeros, and four zeros. So zeros, four. Um, we also have Let's just use a different color because we're using green too much. One, 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 two ones, three ones, and then four ones right here. So this one is good to go um, because of the fact that we have an odd number of zeros and an odd number of ones. Now let's look at let's look at a at a value that may not necessarily be correct. Okay. Um, let's say that, for example, um, for whatever reason. We're using the even parity check method, and we have one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, okay? So right here, we've got 
four zeros. Um, so we've still got like, okay, wait, this is actually only seven bits. Let me just modify this real quick. Mm, let's add a, another zero right here. Okay, so right here we end up having five zeros. And we've got three ones. But we're using the even parity check method. So that means that there is an error here. If, you're, if we were using odd parity check, there would be an error. But we're using even parity check, so there is an error. Okay. Um, going back to our odd parity check method. Um, right here, let's say that we have a number like, um, we'll just simply change one, one, zero, zero, uh, one, 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 okay? Um, so right here, it's, put, it's pretty clear that we've got uh, six, zero, or we've got two zeros. And we have got six ones. So because this is the odd parity check method, um, I mean, clearly there's something wrong here. There's an error with this value that's been sent. Um, so now that we've seen um, all of our error checking methods in data transmission, um, we're going to talk about a type of error checking um, just for numbers that are being entered. So some situations we were talking about would be like a human typing in a value to a computer or to a computer system. Um, or a scanner scanning a barcode, which is really just a bunch of numbers. Um, so the check digit is pretty simple. Well, okay, it's, it's not necessarily simple. It can be complicated. But it is very similar, rather, to our checksum method. So let's say that a um, scanner is scanning a barcode, and that, that barcode has the values of five, six, seven, eight, okay? Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate some mathematical calculation, doesn't really matter what. Um, maybe we might add up these digits like we did with, like we did with, check, with check sums. Um, and we'll get, let's say, 15 plus 11 is gonna be 26, okay? So we're, what we're really trying to send is five, six, seven, eight, but we're also gonna send 26 to the computer um, from the scanner. And then the computer is going to do that same calculation. It's going to add up 5 plus 6, 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8. Um, and it's going to compare what it gets to this check digit right here, 26, which could be one digit or actually, in reality, it could be more digits. But similar to checksums, the idea is that we have some value, we have some numerical value we want to send or some data we want to send in binary format. It could even be something like this. We're calculating some mathematical calculation on this. We're including the result right here. Could be, I don't know, one, one, something like that. We're sending it somewhere else. In this case, we're sending it from a scanner uh, to a computer. Um, and then wherever we're sending it, they're performing the same calculation and they're comparing it against this uh, check digit that we sent. Okay, so the first one's going to be a parity check question. Um, and basically what we want to do here is we want to check whether these digits, whether these values that were sent from one device to another have been corrupted, whether there is some error in them. And right here, we're using the odd parity system. The odd parity system means that the number of ones and the number of zeros needs to be uh, odd. So let, let's look at the first one right here. Um, right here, it looks like we've got, um, we've got four ones. And we've got four zeros. So already, uh, there's definitely something wrong right here, okay? Um, right here, number two, we've got five ones and three zeros, so we should be good, we should be good to go. Um, right here, we've got two ones 
So number three, right here we've got two ones, and we have six zeros, so there's definitely something wrong right here. And that's it, you're just counting up ones and zeros. Next question. So right here we have um, parity checks, both even parity, all right? And here, we're, we're, here it's asking whether the byte has been transmitted correctly. Um, because if you, if you remember, eight bits equals one byte. And right here we have eight digits or eight bits in each um, row. So we've got even parity which means that the number of ones, the number of zeros, should be even. And right here, number one, um, I mean, the number of zeros, the number of ones are each obviously odd, so incorrect. Um, right here, number two, again, they're odd, incorrect. Right here, number three, um, they are even. We've got four ones and we've got four zeros, so correct. Let me just make sure I did. Okay, right here, so this was odd. Yeah, okay, I did this one right, just making sure. Okay. Um, this is kind of a more complicated problem, so I'm gonna walk you through this because this is kind of checking for parity, but in two dimensions. Um, so right here we have a, a parity byte is used to identify which bit has been transmitted incorrectly in a block of data. So instead of just one bit, we've got a whole byte of data. Um, the word flowchart was transmitted using nine bytes of data, one byte per character. The tenth byte, the parity bit, was also transmitted, or the parity byte. The following block of data shows all ten bytes received after transmission. The system uses even parity, and column one is the parity bit. So you don't really need to understand too much about how this works. What you do need to acknowledge is that there are two dimensions to this, right? So we've got column one right here, which is checking for parity. And then we have a parity byte down here, which is also checking for parity. So we need to kind of do this in two dimensions, okay? And I, again, like I know this is confusing, but I get, you didn't like, when I saw this problem, I didn't even really pay attention to what was going on. I just saw byte number and column number, okay? Just one of the bits has been transmitted incorrectly. Write the byte number and column number of this bit. So basically, if, a, if there, what you need to do is you need to go down and you need to check which byte has an error first, okay? So just go down here and just check. Actually, let me just, just go down here and check um, which of these has an odd number of ones and zeros because this has to use even parity. So we're looking at byte one. Um, okay, it looks like there's four uh, ones, so that one should be good to go. We're looking at byte two, there are four ones, that's good to go. Byte three, four, well byte three, we've got six ones, which is fine. Byte four, we've got uh, six ones, it's fine. Byte five, we've got four ones, it's good to go. Byte six, um, we've got, we've got two ones, okay, byte seven, we've only got, oh, we've got three ones, so we obviously have an, have an error right here, okay? So the byte number where there's an error is going to be seven. So now we're looking for a column number, okay? So we found our relevant byte, byte seven. Now we want to see which bit is messed up, which column is messed up here. So just columns and rows, all right? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at these columns, okay? So in column one, um, we've got, let's see, do we have an even number? Mm, let's see, one, two, three, okay, yeah, we, we've got an, well, hold on, wait a sec. Mm, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, we've got an even number there. Wait, hold on, one, two, yeah. We've got an even number there, so it looks like we're good to go. Number two is obviously, I mean, we can count that as even. So we can count number three as even. 
Number four is one, two, three, four. We can count that as even. Number five is one, two, three, four. Count that as even. Um, number six is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hmm, interesting. So we've got seven. So I want to say that our answer is column six, but I'm just going to double check and look at the other columns. Column seven has got one, two, three, four, five, six. That one's good to go. And column eight's got one, two, three, four. That's good to go. So it looks like byte number seven. Byte number seven, right here. And column number six, right here, were where our errors were. And like, again, like even if you didn't understand the question, when it's asking for byte number and column number, you just need to know that in this row, everything had to be, all the number of ones had to be even because it's even parity. And in the column, you had to have an even number of ones because even parity, right? So that's how you do those kinds of problems. I mean, you'll see this, and again, you should just know immediately what to do looking at it. Okay, right here we have a, um, got a different kind of question with a check digit. So a company selling CDs uses a unique six digit identification number for each CD title. The rightmost digit, position one, is the check digit. It's this one right here. Actually, let me just, so this is the check digit right here, as you can see. The other five numbers um, are just like identification numbers in general. So the calculation that's being done to achieve the check digit is multiply each digit by its digit position, um, digit position being right here. Add up the results of the multiplications, divide the answer by 11. If the remainder is zero, the identification number and check digit are valid. So I'm just gonna do one because this is actually just a bit tedious. Um, but okay, we have this identification number one. We've got this identification right number right here. Um, so three is gonna be the check digit. This is the check digit. Um, the rest we need to multiply by the digit position. And to get the digit position, we can look right here. So, all right, we've got, um, we've got two times two um, plus three times nine um, plus uh, um, four times one plus uh, five times two plus six times four. All right, so you've got four plus 27 plus four uh, plus 10 plus 24. So we're going to end up with, uh, it's 31 plus 4 is 35, um, and 35 plus, um, let's see, 31, okay, it's 35 plus 34, it's 35 plus 34, it's going to equal 69. So if you divide 69 by 11, we're gonna get like a remainder of three. It's not gonna be zero, as we said right here. So that means it's basically invalid. And that's how you do those types of questions. Again, I don't wanna talk anymore about this because this is just tedious. Anyways, I hope, anyways, I hope this was useful to you. Um, again, we've got quite a few methods here. I kind of made this video so that you could go back and check each one. Um, and really understand them because these can be kind of complex. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Have a nice day.